Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to turn a container into an image. So basically, we're just taking the current state of a running container and we will convert that into a brand new image that we can reuse in the future. There is something important here and it's that you need to remember that a container is nothing else but a read and write layer, a temporary layer and if you create some files in that layer, after you delete the containers, all of the files or all of the configurations that you did on that layer will also be deleted. All of the information that will persist is the information or the configuration that is defined in the Docker file or in the image itself. So let's just try this and see how it works. I'm just going to remove this container because I was testing something and we're going to create a new container using a Apache. So we're going to say, uh, you know, the normal things, port 80, we're just going to give it a name and we will just give the Apache image. If we go to our web browser and we refresh, then you see the it works message. Now, say that you want to go inside of this container, so you want to say docrexec ti test bash, and you want to modify the index, which is in htdocs index.html. If you want to modify this and if you want to change the content, then say that you want to say hello and you want to override the content of this file with this string, so you just hit enter, and then if you just take a look at the content of the index file, now it says hello, and if you refresh, then it will print hello since the web server is serving this file, so that's cool. So if you see, we just made a modification inside of the container, outside of the Docker file. I mean, this modification is not in the Docker file. So if we remove this container, then this modification will be gone, of course. So let's just create a file in opt test1. And if you see opt, we have the file that we just created. So now we have two changes. The first one is the hello change and the second one is the test one file that we created. So if we just exit out of this container and if we remove this container then all of those changes are going to be gone. And if we just recreate a container and if we just go inside of that new container and if we take a look at opt then you see that this file is no longer there and if we just refresh, then you see that the configuration that is defined in the image is reapplied. Because remember that when you create a container, you are basically creating a container based on the image. So the state of the container will be taken from the image. Now that we know this, how can we turn a container into an image so that we can reuse it in the future? Well, let's take a look at that. Let's remove the container that we just created to explain because we won't be using it anymore and let's just take a look at this and remove that cube. I will just create a new container running CentOS and remember that CentOS has bash as CMD so we need to provide TI to ask for an interactive terminal and then we just say name and we provide like CentOS and then we just pass the CentOS image. Now if you tap docker ps, then you see that you have your container up and running. And if you just go inside of that container, you can do anything that you want inside of your container. But in this case, we want to create two files. So we want to go inside of the opt folder and we want to create one file. So we're going to say echo file one and we will create a file called file1.txt. So if you see, in this location, in opt, we have one new file, which is file1.txt and the content is file1, all caps. Now, in the same folder, we want to create a directory called test directory and inside of this directory, we want to create a file2, so we say file2, test directory, file2.txt. 
And if you see, now we have the file1.txt, we have the test directory, and inside of the test directory we have the file2.txt. Well, we actually made a mistake, it's file2.txt, so let's just rename it, and that's cool. So if you see, all of these things that I did are under the opt directory, and these modifications are not in any Docker file. That means that if I delete this container, all of these changes that I did are going to be destroyed. So now say that for some reason you want to capture the current status of your container and you want to turn it into an image so that you have all of this information into an image and this is going to be persistent and you can reuse it as many times as you want to create new containers. So how do we do this? Well, let's exit out of this container and please make sure that your container is running and please make sure that you know which container you want to backup. So we need to use the docker commit command and with docker commit you provide this ID, you provide the ID of the container or you can also provide the name of the container and then you just pass the final image or the name for your resulting image. In this case you can say final test centos and you can even give it a tag. So if you do this and you hit enter then what happens is that docker creates a snapshot of the current state of your container and turns it into a new image. So now if you just type docker images grep for the name that you just created and you hit enter, well let me just do it like this, you will see that you have an image with the version 1 created 24 seconds ago and this new image should contain the changes that we manually applied. Now let's go ahead and delete the running container with all of the information that we just saved, let's just remove the container and now in order to retrieve or to launch a new container which contains all of the information that we saved previously we need to use this image that we created from this container. So this image will have all of the configuration, will have the current state of this container so let's just copy this name and try to create a new container. So we're going to say docker run dash dti dash dash name test and we will provide the image that we just created. And if you hit enter and if you tap docker ps then you see your new container up and running. And if you just go inside of that container, let's copy this and hit bash you will see in the opt folder that you have your file one and that you have your test directory and you will see that in the test directory you will have your file two. And if you exit out of this container you can create as many containers as you want using your new image. So we can say test two or we can even say test three and we can create as many containers as we want and you'll see all of those containers up and running here using the same image. And all of these containers will have the same information that was retrieved from the previous container once you created the image. So this is it for this video. This is how you create Docker images from a running container. I'll see you in the next lesson.